Okay, good evening, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little why or a yes there. Just let me know that it is indeed working. Hope everybody's had a fantastic evening so far. It was fun to see a lot of you guys in the sentiment and overnight trading webinar. That was a lot of fun um, and, I, and very informative, I think. We got, got to discuss several different methods on how you could use the scanner um, on a daily basis and, um, and talk about sentiment. I think that was really, really awesome. So, all right, guys, well, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I just want to welcome everybody here. I also want to give a shout out to those that are new in the program. If you're watching this in the recording, uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section down below. If you're watching this live, feel free to ask questions in the uh, chat box function. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. As always, I need to remind you guys about the risks involved in this market. You can lose all or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. So please be aware of how many pips you're risking on each trade, in addition to how big your lot size is and ultimately how that would affect your account if you were to lose money. So make sure that you're going through that process each and every time that you take a trade. All right, guys. Well, let's have a little conversation on the COT report. So this is our first COT report webinar of the year, which I'm super excited about. I love the COT report. I, this is now my, I don't know how many years. I've been trading the COT report for like six years now. It's been a long time. Um, and I've adjusted the way I've used the COT report over time. And I feel like we've got a really good handle on the COT report now um, from a lot of different standpoints. And I feel like the scanner has been this um, kind of accumulation of everything I know about the COT report, kind of put it into one place. Um, I actually have one more thing I was thinking about. I might not, I'm, I'm thinking about adding it to the scanner right now. I'm in the middle of a back test, but, um, and I'll share that with you guys. Some of the things that I'm doing with the, you know, I, as we go along the webinar today, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Um, and I think you'll like it, which is kind of cool. Um, but let's have kind of a little bit of an introduction on the cot report. Um, we do have some new folks in the program. We also have people watching this in the recording who are needing some assistance. So let's go over, um, the COT report. So let's go to the cftc.gov website. This is um, where the COT report comes from. And let me explain what it is. So the CFTC is the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. They're a financial regulatory authority here in the United States. And what they do is they regulate the futures and commodities markets to make sure that the business is handled correctly and that you know, they limit fraud and things like that. One of their other responsibilities is to release the COT report. And COT stands for Commitment of Traders. And if you go to this ribbon up here on their homepage, you can access it right here where it says Commitment of Traders. And a COT report, what it is, is it tells you and me and other traders what the banks are buying and selling for the week. And for the, you know, how not necessarily for the week, but just what they're buying and selling. Okay. So every Tuesday, the banks are required to release their positions. They have to send off a report. Um, it's very official and they send it to the CFTC and say, as of this time on this date on, you know, this Tuesday, which is every Tuesday, they say, this is what we had as far as positions go on the Euro. This is what we had on the pound. This is what we had on the Frank. And, and not only do they look at currencies, but they also look at things like agriculture, um, they also look at petroleum, natural gas, electricity, uh, precious metals, and what their subsequent positions are on all of those instruments. And so, as you can imagine, the COT report is quite extensive because it looks at all these different banks, at banks, and they have to accumulate, you know, the the sum of all positions every week, which is a big deal. It's a lot of work, right? Okay. Now, why is this important for you and me? Like, why do we care about the COT report? So. Why would I want to know what the banks are doing is the question we're asking, right? Well, I think a lot of us would want to know what the banks are doing, right? Because a lot of these guys are really good traders. We just got off of a webinar. We were just in the sentiment webinar a few moments ago. And we were talking about how you don't want to trade like the retail traders, right? You actually want to trade kind of in an opposite way of what retail traders are doing, right? Now, send them, uh, the COT report's a little different. We kind of want to follow them a little bit more because they're actually kind of good at what they do. Uh, and they're kind of good traders and they make money and they wouldn't be on the cot report unless they did make money. Right. So like I said, following these guys over a longer period of time, 
uh, does seem to have its fruits and merit. And so obviously we want to monitor that. And so there's a lot of different things you can do with cot reports because there's actually a lot of different cot reports and there's a lot of different ways you can look at the data. Now we've simplified it. So we'll try to get you to the right place of where you need to look. Um, but we'll kind of do a quick rundown. So when you get to this page on the CFTC website, these are all the reports and they come out every week. These are actually released every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, I just mentioned Tuesday, right? So on Tuesday, the banks have to give their data to the CFTC by law. And then by Friday, the CFTC, you know, they take two or three days to uh, kind of articulate the data. And then they release that data on on a, on Friday, okay? And anyone in the world can actually access this. It's totally free, which is pretty cool. And um, these are what the reports look like. So you've got, these are the agriculture reports right here. And uh, some of them are for futures. Some of them for, are for options trading. Right here, you have what's called the financial futures report. This is a pretty common report to access. And then down here, you have the legacy reports. These are probably the most common reports to access, specifically the CME COT report. So these are the ones that people access the most. And specifically, the short format's the easiest one to read. And this is the one that's used pretty much colloquially across most platforms. Like when you go on barchart.com or you go on any other place that looks at the COT report, they're pretty much looking at the short format of the CME. So if I click right here, this is a COT report. This is the most recent COT report. It will always be the most recent COT report when you click on that. And you'll see it's dated 12-26-23. And that's the COT report as of uh, last Friday when they released it. Or excuse me, um, as of last Tuesday when they received the COT data. However, this report was released on the 29th of December. And this is the most recent report we have. That also begs a question. A lot of people ask me this question, you know, hey, is is this uh, COT report even useful if it's a little bit delayed? Uh, it depends on what you're using it for, right? If you're using this to take a scalp trade, it's useless. It's absolutely useless. Um, if you're using this to take a, you know, an intraday trade, you know, that you're expecting to open and close within the same day, probably also useless. However, if your intention is to build a position over several days, a week, or even a couple of weeks, this is one of the most powerful things that I know of in the entire world of futures and Forex trading. By far. It's one of the most powerful tools. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to use it. So basically when I'm in here, um, you can see how big this report is, right? Here's the scroll bar. It's a very big report. It's also very boring. It's just black and white. Um, you'll notice up here, this is, um, you know, kind of what you're looking at. This will just say, okay, this is USD, palm, um, Malaysian crude palm oil on the CME, futures contracts as of this date, okay? Okay. And then down here, you'll see the non-commercial and commercial side of the market. Now, why is that important to know the difference? So commercial... Just long story short, I'll keep this short because I want to move on. But commercial data or non-commercial data, let's start here. Non-commercial data are the large speculators. So these are these are people who trade the markets with the purpose of speculating. They just want to find the um, what currency pair is going up, or what you know what precious metals going up or going down. So they invest to make profits. That's all they're doing. Commercials are also looking to make profits, but their profits are different. Their profits are made through the conduct through conducting their business, right? So if you're a pig farmer in, um, I don't know, in the Midwest, and you, it's a big production. I don't know. Let's say you're a big food company, multinational company, and you sell pigs to the whole world, right? And so you're big. Well, let's say you want to offset your pig production by hedging through agricultural means. You can do that. You can actually use the futures market to hedge against your crop. 
and that's com the commercial side of the market. Okay. And commercials tend to do the opposite of what non-commercials are doing. Okay. So you'll notice here, like with the, we don't trade this, but you'll notice here, actually, this is not a good example. Let's try to find one. Um, let's just pull up. By the way, when I search the COT report, I search by currency. So if you just go AUD, that pulls up the Australian dollar because that's the abbreviation for the, or the suffix for the Australian dollar. So I just search AUD and it pulls up. So here's the Australian dollar. Here's non-commercial versus commercial. Notice the difference. Notice how there's fewer long positions on non-commercial than there are long positions on commercial, right? So they typically do the opposite of each other. Now, the other thing I wanted to highlight too, and this is key to understanding the COT report. These are all in $100,000 positions. So each unit, so if there's 83,000 contracts, like for example, right here on the commercial side, that means that there's 83,000 contracts um, that the banks own on the commercial side, uh, long positions. That's huge. How huge is that? Well, that's $100,000 times 83,000, right? I don't know the math on that. Maybe somebody could figure that out for me, but it's like $83,000 times $100,000 is what you're looking at. It's a big number, right? Okay, very, very big number. And retail traders don't trade like that. We don't have that ability. We don't, all of us, if we put all of our money together, we just don't trade to the, nearly this amount of money. So when these guys move, they're actually creating a market for each other. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. Like when commercial makes a shift in their positions, non-commercial is there to pick it right up. It's kind of what that's um, 8.3 billion. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And that's just on the CME. That's not including the other exchanges that the CFT looks at. That's not including um, international trade that goes on with the Australian dollars. That's just CME. And that's and that's also just the commercial side. Right. So yeah, very lots of money being pushed around um on all standpoints, right? Okay. 8.3 billion. Yeah, that is a lot of money. Okay. And that's just the Australian dollar. I think there, there's way more money that goes into the U.S. dollar or the and the uh, euro. Euro has a lot of money that gets pushed through it. Pound as well. Okay, so now let me show you how to read this as well. So I've just shown you, um, you know, the difference between the two. So usually when we're trading, who do we want to follow? Non-commercial or commercials? Depends. Again, it depends on what we're doing, right? What's the goal? Well, generally speaking, and this is pretty much standard across anybody who teaches the COT report, they're going to teach you and I'm going to teach you the same thing in general. I'm going to show you some things that are different though and that I teach that are huge to understanding the COT report. So non-commercial is your um, large specs. And so we usually want to follow these guys because they're usually pretty good at what they do. So right now, most of them are short on the Australian dollar. And not very long, not as long, right? Definitely, if you compare these two numbers, there's a bigger short position than there is a long position. So as a longer term holistic view, we'd probably look at that and say, well, Australian dollar is probably going to go down on a longer term view standpoint because obviously they're mostly short. Okay, that's a good reasonable rationalization or observation you can make on the COT report. Now, when you look at commercial data, Something I want you guys to notice is, and this is not a great example, but usually commercial has more contracts um, than non-commercial. This one, they're about even, and actually maybe non-commercial is a little bit bigger. But if you compare like the Euro, let's pull up the Euro here. Hey traders, it's Steve from the future. I hope you have enjoyed this video so far. If you are getting value out of this video, be sure to hit the like button, click the subscribe button, and share your trading thoughts. I read all the comments, so feel free to ask any questions you have there too. On a side note, I host live trading calls like this one you are watching every day. Some of my biggest trading secrets I share exclusively to just the members of my program. I host these live trading calls every day, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. 
I also host a basic training webinar every Monday for the newer traders and the regular COT report and sentiment trading webinars every Wednesday night at 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern for the advanced and aspiring traders. All of these calls are recorded and promptly posted on the members trading calendars at the conclusion of each call in case your schedule does not permit you to come to the live call. All of my members have complete access to the scanner. We call it Steve Scanner. This is an institutional grade trade alert scanner that picks the direction of the week on all 28 major currency pairs and includes trading instruments like gold, silver, NAS 100, US 30. Just in the last 90 days, I have made over 3000 pips just taking the top trade signals from the scanner at the beginning of the week and then just holding those trade alerts until Friday. If you want access to the scanner, you can start a 14 day free trial with the join link in the description to get started. Lastly, if you really want to be a full fledged VIP member of my program to get access to things like the basic training course, live signals channel, Steve scanner, trading calendars, and the one on one calls with me throughout the month, you can use code friend of Steve. That's friend of Steve, no spaces at checkout and save $50 on your first month. Again, just click the link in the description below and apply that coupon to become a VIP member. And I look forward to helping you with your inevitable trading success going forward. Now back to the video. Here's non-commercial versus commercial. Look at the long positions on non-commercial and short positions versus the long and short commercial. Yeah, just versus commercial. There's nearly a million contracts between long and short on the commercial side versus the perhaps three, just over 300,000 contracts combined for non-commercial. So why is this important? Because when we're trading the COT report, what I have found is that when commercial makes a shift in positions, so even though we want to follow non-commercial, I get that. Like that's the long-term view. When commercial makes a move in the market, it usually affects the market in profound ways in the following week. Okay. And this is something that I feel like we have the biggest edge in our program. Like no one else is talking about this. Um, and it's just like one of the biggest aspects of the COT report. Um, because everyone else is so infatuated with non-commercials and they're, and they're right. That's, that's probably who you should be following is non-commercials, right? You know, if, if they're buying the Euro, then let's buy the Euro. But the thing is, um, I, I get it. That's, that's, that's important. But the thing is when commercials really start to move the market on a week to week basis, like I said, it has profound influences the following week in the market. So that's where the shift come from comes from on the scanner. So when you see when you fil when you go to the scanner on the website and you filter this by shift, you can see the big shifts of the week. Like right here on the pound cad, there's a really big shift, eighteen point five seven. That's a positive shift. So that means that the commercials had a really big change between the pound and the cad. And subsequently, there's a good chance that because of how big that move was, it's going to kind of have a ripple effect. The following week, right? Same thing with USD CAD. What's the USD CAD been doing this week? Up and up and up, right? Why is that? Probably part of it has to do with the fact that commercials had such a big move on the USD CAD um, to the tune of fifteen over fifteen percent in the difference in the change. The net change in positions was fifteen percent. And so that's why we're seeing a big move on the USD CAD this week. I, I think that's maybe one of the reasons. I'm not going to say it's the only reason, but yeah, that's a big reason why. Uh, it's because the uh, commercial had a big shift, right? How can we find that? Let's actually pull up the CAD. Here's the Canadian dollar. Um, and last week, they actually dropped positions in both categories. Like they dropped a bunch of positions in the, on their long side. And they also bunch of, dropped a bunch on their short side, but they dropped a, a substantial amount on their long side right here. And when they drop their longs on the CAD, that's going to send the USD CAD um, higher. You're going to go higher because the CAD is weakening and the US dollar is strengthening, right? That's exactly what's going on. 
Um, okay, so this is this is an ex- just one example of what I'm looking at. So when I look at COT report data, it depends on what I'm trying to do. If I'm trying to generate a weekly signal, the shift in commercial data from what I have found seems to be the most powerful way to generate a good signal for the week. Okay. Um, it's not a hundred percent, like nothing, nothing's a hundred percent, but it just seems like the shift in commercial data seems to be the most powerful weekly signal. As far as like, if, if I care about making money this week from Sunday to Friday, the shift in commercial data seems to be the most accurate thing that I have found so far. I mean, I'm always willing to innovate and find better ways to trade, but so far that seems to be the most powerful thing that I have found. And so when you look at the scanner, that's what you're looking at here when you filter this by shifts. Um, Obviously, that's not the only thing we look at. So there's other things to look at, like the overall signal, and not every shift signal is going to make it in here. Um, um, Let's see, for example, this Frank Yen had a tiny shift, um, and so it was just a neutral signal, right? Just a neutral signal because a tiny shift. And it wound up being a, a strong buy this week on the Frank Yen. Um, let's see if I can find another example. Now, the rest of these are in alignment, though. All these shifts are in alignment with the overall signal. So, yeah, it does have a big effect on the market. That's for sure. All right. So, let's go back to the COT report. Okay. What else do I need to explain on the COT report? Um, So like I said, in general, when non-commercials, I like to follow non-commercials from a long-term standpoint. So when you look at the scanner and you look at these long-term signals, these are based off of long, this is called long-term caught signal. Okay. You can't really see it because, you know, there's not enough room on here on this ribbon to put the full name on here, but that's the name of this column is long-term caught signal. So you can fil- you can actually move these around as you please on the scanner. Um, but yeah, this is long-term caught signal. So when you look at this long-term caught signal, this is all from, um, let's go back to it, non-commercial data. Okay, so when I'm looking at non-commercial, I use this to figure out my long-term bias. And then when I'm trying to figure out where I'm going for the week, I try to follow the shift in commercial data because of that concept. Again, this is pretty proprietary. I feel like we're the only group that teaches this um, because everyone else has their own version. Everyone else that I follow that trades caught looks at just non-commercial and that's it. They don't look at commercials, but we look at both um, non-commercials more for long-term and commercials more for picking your weekly signal because when they move, it usually causes a big move that ripples the following week in the market, right? Okay. Okay, what else? Um, Oh, yes, I know what I need to explain. And if you guys have other questions, feel free to put those questions in the chat box. Okay, so I've explained this before, but I want to explain it now um, just because we do have new folks in the program and there are people watching this in the recording. So I want to make sure that everyone knows what we're talking about here. So I hope this isn't too confusing, but I want to make sure we cover it because it's very important. So we want to follow what the banks are doing, except when they get over leveraged. Okay. This is where the crowded market signal comes into play. Okay. So when the banks get a really, really big position on a currency pair, you don't actually want to follow them anymore, okay? Because your time to follow them has already expired. So the trend is your friend until the end, right? Have you guys ever heard that before? Maybe you've just heard the trend is your friend. Have you ever heard the trend is your friend until the end? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about. So you want to be a trend follower until it's no longer, you know, until it's no longer a trend, right? How do you know that? How do you know when the trend's going to expire? 
right? Well, we've built that into the scanner, actually. It's the functionality is already in here. So there's actually not a lot of signals like this right now. We did have a ton in November and a ton in December, and we made a bunch of money on those trades, the crowded market signals from last month and the week and the month before. Um, we just don't have a lot of them right now. A lot of them have kind of pulled back. So a lot of things have gone back into their old trends or they've just kind of the opportunities kind of expired at this point. But basically, this is the thing I wanted to explain. So there's this crowded market indicator on the scanner right here. This is really cool. It's ranked one out of five stars. And when you get one star, what that means is like these ones down here. I'll see, I'll just pull it up. One star. What that means is the banks don't have a huge interest as far as non-commercial data goes on that pair. Just means that they just they just don't know. They're, they're like 50-50. They're 50-50 on their direction. They really just don't have a bias. Okay. That's all that doesn't mean it's a bad signal for the other things that we do. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad signal. All this is trying to just tell you is, hey, the banks are either really biased or they're not. So when I flip this the other way, you can see, okay, I got five out of five stars on the Euro Aussie and on the Euro Yen. What does that mean? Well, what it means is the banks actually have really big long positions on these two pairs. How do I know that? Because right here it says strong sell is the signal. And if it says strong sell in the long-term column, that means the banks have a really big buy position. So it's just the opposite of what the signal is telling you to do. Why is that? Well, it's because when the banks get really biased, we need to actually go the opposite of what they've been doing. So if they're biased long in a big, big way, we actually need to start rethinking our process and our thought process to go the other way. That's what we're essentially doing right there. Okay. Um. So the Euro, the Euro Aussie and Euro Yen, those are the two right now that are in crowded market phase. Um, nothing else is in crowded market phase. There's a few others that left, like the Euro CAD was in crowded market phase. Um, and it still might be, but it's just not to five stars. Um, same thing with the Pound Yen, same thing with the Euro Franc. All of those were in crowded market phase last month. They are no longer in crowded market phase, right? So when I when I'm trading the trading this um the signal becomes a lot more powerful when you get into crowded market phase okay and so and I and I actually built this into my spreadsheet I might pull it up but the it's already on here it, pretty much everything on the spreadsheet's on the scanner but when the banks get really really leveraged and they get overpriced into a direction, again, that's going to create a long-term sell. Now, I've programmed the scanner to give a little bit more credence to the signal when that happens. So we care a lot more when something gets into crowded market phase um, than even if it's, just, if it's just a sentiment signal. That's important, but it's not as important when something gets into crowded market phase. Um, same thing with the... Cot report weekly shifts. Those are important, but I don't believe it's as important when something gets into crowded market. So when I'm building out a swing trade, I I like to use the crowded market because when the banks get really levered into some direction, like with the Euro Yen or the Euro Aussie, I like to call their bluff on that and like to actually because here's if you think about it, it's like a rubber band. If the banks have a really big long position on the euro and a subsequently big short position on the Aussie, right? Or on the euro, they have a big position on the yen, they have a really big short position. That means they're stretched out in both directions. They're really long on one currency and they're really short on another currency. And so what happens is they they have to pull it backwards. Okay, so when they, when they, sorry guys, my watch is talking to me. When they get biased one direction versus the other direction, they have to pull back because they've stretched out that rubber band too far. That's basically what's happened. And it has to pull back the other way. Okay, so that really matters to me because I know that they've gotten themselves into that situation and now they have to start taking profits. So if they're really long on the Euro Yen or they're really long on the Euro Aussie, they have to start taking profits anytime those two pairs go up, right? 
if those pairs go up, we got to take, they got to take profits. So I'm l actively looking for places to short those currency pairs because they're doing the same thing. Why? Because they have a long position that they have to exit now. And when they exit that position, that's going to cause a move lower in the market, which is an opportunity, obviously. We want to take advantage of that opportunity. So I really love these crowded market signals. After the new year and after Christmas, we only had two left. Um, during before, let's see, before uh, Christmas, we had like, eight or 10 of these that were in crowded market phase. It was blissful. It was awesome because we had so many opportunities. Um, now we've had to kind of focus our opportunities with just some of the weekly signals because there's not a lot of crowded market signals at the moment. Um, with that said, you can still focus in on the Euro ASEAN and on the Euro Yen if you're building out a swing trade over the next couple of weeks. But that's how I would use this the long-term column. I wouldn't try to just focus on it on a weekly perspective. If you're gonna focus, like if you're gonna take these two trades, I, I would focus on it on a couple of weeks. I wouldn't just judge your trade on a single week because that's the context of that signal. Um, the overall signals for the week could change significantly, though, on a week-to-week -week basis, just because you got sentiment, long-term, and shift data that could change that. All right. I think that pretty well covers it. I actually don't have much more content to cover today. Um, I don't know if you guys have other questions, but that's all I really wanted to cover is just make sure that everyone understands the relationship between the COT report, how it works, where it comes from, when we get it, and then how it relates to the scanner. By the way, when we get new COT report data, it comes out every Friday. We typically get that COT report data built in and updated into the scanner on Saturdays. Um, and then markets closed on Saturday, so you can't even do anything with it. But it's ready for you for use by the time the market opens on Sunday. Um, the scanner will be updated in time before the market opens. And you'll be able to go in here and take new trades based off of new cot data and sentiment data, which is super awesome. All right, guys. Well, I don't have much else to cover so, and I don't see any other questions. So we'll go ahead and wrap up. But I appreciate your attendance today. Thank you for coming, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your evening and we'll see you guys in the next webinar. Thanks for coming.